Hi guys, Rachel CPR here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I say to you, welcome. I hope you stay a while. So today we're gonna to have some hair talk. Last week we talked about single strand knots and how they affect your hair. Today we are going to talk about things that prevent you from keeping the length in your hair. And I have a little list here and they are big. I have five items that I'm going to go in depth for. In, I'm going to go in depth on five items, but a couple of things I'm going to mention are actually in my last video, but I decided to put it in this video because they are things that prevent your hair from your, you from keeping your ends. So the first, second, oh, the first and second things are going to be together because they are in the single strand knot video and they are not trimming your hair and pulling knots off of the end of your hair when they um, tie up at the end. Um, when you don't trim your hair, it causes a whole tumbleweed effect in that the bottoms of your hair get frayed and so your hair is not allowed the nourishment that it should be getting from all the wonderful products that you use just the moisture from the air, all of those things don't have the opportunity to enter the hair simply because the frayed ends suck up everything and it doesn't distribute it throughout the hair. Again, that is in my last video on single strand knots. And then the single strand knots, if you do decide just to pull them off to get rid of them when you find them, which can be a habit that people develop. I know my daughter had that habit for a little while. If you have that habit, you create, um, again, a tumbleweed effect in that once you pull that hair off without cutting it, you create another set of splits that are going to be a problem. They are going to come off and they are going to immediately start wrapping around other strands or itself and creating another knot that you'll pull off and then so it just keeps going. It doesn't add to the health of your hair. It actually takes away from your length retention. So those are two things that I'll put into one. Now I have five additional items and one of them is a big one and that is removing hair ties from your hair in a way that rips the hair off. Um, in general, if you wear like the uh, small black elastics, not the ones with the little clip on it because we all know not to use those, the smooth ones, once you take them out of your hair, they will roll if you are just like pulling it off of your hair and then when it gets to the end it's tangled and if you just snap it off with the tangled hair in there you will actually create a problem if it's something you're doing on a regular basis if you do it every once in a while it won't be a problem but if you're doing that on a regular basis it will be a definite problem in that you'll notice that on one side of your hair exactly where you finish pulling your hair out of the elastic you're gonna notice a lot of very bad split ends or even a lighter color in the hair because the lighter color in the hair comes from the sun or light reflecting through the different channels that the splits make in your hair. And so that is something that you want to avoid. You don't wanna just pull the hair ties out of your hair because on a regular basis that will cause major damage and you will not retain your length. The next thing we will talk about is going to be using Using the wrong type of hair protector at nighttime or under your hats to protect your hair. This can be a little bit of a touchy subject simply because in general we know we should use a satin pillowcase, satin bonnet, things like that to protect our hair because the satin is very, very smooth. And so it is going to be the best thing to keep your hair protected and frizz free. But when you use a satin pillowcase, you do not want to use anything that has natural fibers in it because natural fibers are from nature and they will actually draw your moisture out. Nature needs moisture and so it'll take it in any form that it can. So if you have a, an actual silk scarf, not a silky scarf that's made out of a fiber like polyester, rayon, or anything like that, if you have an actual silk scarf that you're using on your hair, it can be something that is sapping your moisture. And the way you can test that out is by simply taking a little bit of water in a dropper or just on the tip of your finger and tap it onto the silk. If you do that, the silk is going to immediately absorb it. It may not even go to the back side of the fabric because the fabric, the silk fabric is going to absorb it. Whereas if you were to do the very same thing with something that is polyester or rayon, the water goes through. So what you do is you just take a dropper, drip, 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 onto the silk, onto the polyester. 
you're going to see the polyester, it's gonna go straight through. It is just gonna channel right through because it doesn't need the moisture. Whereas silk, which is from nature, will draw that moisture in and it will hold on to as much of that moisture as possible. Literally, if it can hold on to every drop of it, it will until the weave that it has or the fabric print, the weave of the fabric is all filled up. Then once that happens, the moisture will start to go through. But until it's filled, it will not release any of that moisture. And so you don't want to use anything on your hair that's going to absorb your moisture because we want to keep our moisture where it is, right? <laughs> okay. And the next thing that we'll talk about are, oh, twirling your ends when you are twisting your hair. A lot of people twirl their ends when they do their twist outs or if they just twist their hair at nighttime. If you are always twirling your ends like this, think about your next motion. Generally speaking, you take the hair off of the ends of your hair. And that's because as you're twirling, you're snagging hair and you have the ends of your hair staying on your finger and you take it off. If you continue to do that, even if you keep a, a pretty good amount of length, you're going to notice that when you go and get your hair trimmed, you need a lot more trimmed off than you should, simply because that hair is being broken while you're doing such a wonderful thing protecting your hair at nighttime. You're twirling and then immediately taking off all those um, broken ends. In general, it's not gonna be full hair strands. It's going to be broken ends that come off. And so you wanna be careful with that. Instead of twirling your hair, take the time just to rub the hair like this between your hands and it will flatten out and smooth out without the damage, okay? And then, the next topic is feeding your ends with moisture and not just with oils or butters. When you put um, moisture on your ends, that would be water or conditioners that have the main ingredient of water. You put it onto your ends and then you use your oils and your creams to seal that in. But you can't really depend on oils and creams like shea butter and things like that to give you moisture as much as you want to infuse your hair with moisture, which is the water and the conditioners, and then seal it off on the ends. The ends of your hair are the oldest part of your hair, and so they are the ones that you really have to take care of to keep them where they are. <laughs> and then this last one is not necessarily for an overall hair health as much as it is for your edges. If you are using an edge control that um, kind of gives you a rubbery effect on the hairline, like as you're applying it, you notice it's kind of herky-jerky and they work very, very well. But if you are having that herky-jerky effect on your hairline, you will notice that your hairline will start to thin simply because the hair is not being allowed to um, be smoothed instead of tugged. And of course, tugging on your hairline, you just don't wanna do it because you know no one wants to have their hairline come out because they're simply trying to smooth it over. And in time, if you continue to smooth your hairline, it will relax and it will smooth over, even without a brush, without a tool, without anything, it will do that. So if you have a product that you use on your hair that kind of gives you that tugging, rubbery effect when you're applying it, you wanna make sure that you use it sparingly, as in you should do it for maybe special occasions or when you wear a certain hairstyle, you want your edges to be really tight and laid then you put that kind of a thing on your hairline. Before a daily basis, you don't wanna put anything that's going to be rubbery and make your hairline um, thin out because then you'll end up needing more of the product in order for you to lay your edges down because it's causing a problem with your hairline. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this information is helpful. And if you want to see the single strand knot video, I will definitely link it in this video in the i cards or below. And I will see you again next time, guys. Please leave any questions you have about this video if there's something I didn't go to in depth enough or if you have any questions about anything that I said, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments. Bye, guys.